this talk that I'm going to give, this lecture, uh, is adapted from another lecture I gave in April at Brown University. A, a uh, anti-war student group asked me to uh, speak about the nuclear armed submarines that are going to be built in Rhode Island and Connecticut um, and speak about the defense industry in the two states uh, more generally. So I, but then to also inform you about the uh, nuclear armed submarines, it's the Ohio class of submarines. And that is really the most um, sort of, I guess you could say, substantial contribution of New England towards the, towards the U.S. nuclear arsenal. There really needs to be much more of a public discussion about it. Uh, people weren't talking about why, um, why the state needed to be giving millions of dollars to a federal contractor that already got billions from the federal treasury. Um, why no one was talking about, you know, is the state okay with the fact that people here are going to be building nuclear weapons? Um, there seemed to be a lot of questions that um, people weren't asking, so I decided that I want to look into it. Um, because I'm going to be talking about nuclear weapons in this, uh, in this talk, one thing you guys probably want to be aware of is in the most recent nuclear posture review put out by the Trump administration, um, it raised the possibility, it said that the Navy was considering putting low yield nuclear weapons on Zumwalt destroyers, which are built at Bath Ironworks. And the idea here is they have low yield weapons. Um, obviously these are nuclear weapons, but they have less of a catastrophic impact as a Trident uh, nuclear warhead, which is what's on the submarines. Um, so the rationale why they're thinking of it is they're saying if Russia fired a low yield, smaller nuclear weapon um, at the U.S., at an ally, whatever, um, the U.S. would be in a position where they would think we can't retaliate with a massive strike. We have to have some lower yield, some lower impact strike. So therefore, we need to think about having smaller um, nuclear weapons, uh, more tactical nuclear weapons. My reporting, I focused uh, primarily on this as, as a political economy story, so the amount of subsidies that go to the company, and then also the campaign, campaign contributions that they give to public officials, um, and how those relate to, to each other. Um, so total state and local subsidies awarded since 1997, around $250 million. Um, so I have another stat here, Department of Defense is the largest federal contractor in the state overseeing 88% of federal contracts in Maine. So that comes from an analysis uh, done in 2015 by the National Priorities Project. General Dynamics, operating the electric boat shipyard in Groton, Connecticut. Um, they build attack submarines, Virginia class attack submarines, which are nuclear powered. And they build the nuclear armed submarines. Um, they built the Ohio class, which is the current fleet of nuclear armed submarines, and uh, they're going to be building the Columbia class, which is going to be the next generation of nuclear armed submarines. Um, so they have a long history of building nuclear armed submarines. They built the first uh, ballistic missile submarine for the U.S. Navy, launched in, I think, 1959. Um, all all members of the main congressional delegation, they all receive money from the defense industry and from General Dynamics specifically. Um, but Susan Collins really stands out from, from the other members of the delegation uh, in terms of uh, the real size of contributions to her and the, the consistency of them. Um, so it's also important to note that she's on the Appropriations Committee subcommittee on defense. So she plays a pretty critical role in deciding what money goes to what contractors, what programs. In terms of career campaign contributions from the defense industry, $623,000. Her top campaign contributor, um, total, not just defense industry, is General Dynamics, $163,000. Raytheon, $52,000. Lockheed Martin, $42,000 and they include PAC, um, PAC money and employee contributions to her campaign and her leadership PAC. 
Uh, another interesting thing about Susan Collins is her husband has uh, pretty substantial stock holdings in uh, several defense contractors. So in her last, um, in her most recent uh, financial disclosure report with the Senate, she disclosed that he had holdings, uh, stock assets in Boeing, United Technologies, Honeywell, and 3M, um, and previously had stock in Lockheed Martin. So that raises a potential conflict of interest uh, questions. You know, if she's making decisions about um, military spending, that is, you know, I mean, you could say it is affecting companies that he holds uh, stock in. Uh, they give a talk. They're introduced by the CEO of one of the companies who talks about how great an ally they are and the, all the great work they're doing for them. Um, so it, it's not their, um, they're cheerleading for these companies. They're siphoning, you know, funneling money to them. Uh, it's not, it's not anything that they really try to hide, you know, it's, um, it's, it's pretty out there in the open, it's just become accepted. Yep. I said that right now, uh, in Connecticut and Rhode Island, General Dynamics is readying itself to build the next generation of nuclear armed submarines, the Columbia class. Um, the current class is called the Ohio class of ballistic missile submarines. Uh, so these were built between um, 1979 and then the mid to late 90s. They were commissioned from 1981 to 1997. Um, during the Reagan presidency, when uh, defense spending was booming, it was a really uh, big business time for electric boat, General Dynamics electric boat in Rhode Island and Connecticut. Um, they built uh, 18 18 nuclear armed submarines for the Ohio class. That was eventually reduced to 14 that are now active under um, the START reduction treaty. And all of these submarines carry uh, Trident ballistic missiles. So the stated reason for these submarines is that they would be a deterrent that they lurk you know, beneath the surface of the ocean um, how deep they go is classified, but we know they can go at least 800 feet below the surface. Um, and the idea is that a country would not want to fire a nuclear weapon at the United States because that they, they would know that these uh, submarines are lurking somewhere and can launch a Trident missile that would be a retaliation. So one interesting thing to me when I was reporting on this is that in Rhode Island and Connecticut today, um, the current buildup is not really anything people talk about too much um, in, terms of a, in terms of protesting. Uh, politicians will talk about it as an economic development opportunity, um, all of that, but there's not really substantial pushback from the public, uh, at least at this point. When the last buildup occurred in the 80s and the 90s, there was uh, substantial pushback. There were large demonstrations. People broke into the facility in Connecticut and in Rhode Island to vandalize property. There was um, big resistance to it. People were arrested, um, large-scale protests. These are some pictures that peace activists um, who were involved at the time uh, gave me. This is a article from the New York Times from 1984 and it's about how the protests were getting so large in scale and counter protesters who thought that there should be um, you know we should be building these submarines they were coming out to counter the protesters and you're having massive crowds this was uh, 500 people were at this at this one demonstration between protesters and counter protesters and there were 300 police officers um, to, to police the protest. Uh, this is a story from the New York Times. This one in particular said that members of the Ku Klux Klan had come out to counter protest peace activists. Um, so they were there in their you know, hooded attire and um, all of that. Apparently they thought that the U.S. should be building nuclear armed submarines. 
one point that I focused on in my reporting, because um, it does seem like people have amnesia or, or uh, politicians just want people to forget about what had happened in the past. Right now, the governor, uh, the executives at General Dynamics, they're selling Rhode Island and Connecticut on this idea that you can't pass up this opportunity. We're going to hire so many people. This is the greatest thing for your states. Um, but no one talks about the boom and the bust that already happened to this community, to these two states. So in the early 1990s, this crisis hits and people start talking seriously about economic conversion. So this is um, Jack Reed, the senator for Rhode Island right now. He was a representative in 1991. So this is what Jack Reed said at the time. Uh, I believe if we begin to plan now and work together now, we can face this challenge of transforming our economy from a heavily defense-oriented economy to an economy that will produce products we can sell around the world. All these Congress members get up. They talk about this urgent need to convert the economy. Um, economists submitted testimony that said the same thing. And then almost right at the end, they, um, they give the platform to an executive from Electric Boat, from General Dynamics Electric Boat, and uh, he says the following. I must make one point very plain. The primary objective of Electric Boat is very straightforward. It has become the Navy's sole supplier of nuclear submarines. We will pursue diversification where it makes sense, but not at the expense of our primary task. So this guy basically got up there and he said, you know, thanks for your input, but no thanks. Um, this is our business model. Electric Boat has been named the prime contractor for the Ohio replacement um, submarines. These are called the Columbia class. So basically the Navy says that we've had these, we've had our current fleet of nuclear armed submarines long enough that they now need to be replaced um, and we're going to spend 104 billion dollars to build an entirely new uh, weapons system. It seemed to me as I was reporting the stories that um, Rhode Island and Connecticut were probably setting themselves up for um, another mass layoff situation and um, one, one military analyst I spoke to, he said, you know, you just don't know if it's going to be five years, 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years, but it's going to come at, at some point. So some specifics of the Columbia class. So the plan is to build 12 submarines. Um, the fleet is currently at 14, but the plan is that these submarines would have um, they would be nuclear power, the nuclear power, the, the, it would work in a different way that they wouldn't need to be refueled at their half-life the way they are now. So they could have more out there um, doing deterrent missions and they wouldn't have to therefore have as many. Um, delivered to the Navy between 2027 and 2041 and the work would be split between Newport News and Electric Boat with 80% of the work going to Electric Boat and 20% going to Newport News. Uh, the Congressional Budget Office says it's going to cost upwards of $104 billion, um, and that's in 2006, uh, 2016 dollars. Uh, the Navy says that it's going to cost $100 billion, and that if you inflation adjusted that for the lifetime of the construction, that would be $128 billion. And the Navy says um, there is a greater than 50% chance that they're underestimating the cost of it. So this is all part of a $1.2 trillion nuclear modernization uh, that was started under the Obama administration and is now being continued under the Trump administration. So a total, um, total revamping, total overhaul of all components of the U.S. nuclear triad. So land, sea, and air. So I have some quotes here from people uh, who are critical of this plan. Um, this, this is a U.S. Naval Institute analyst named Norman Polmar. And he says, we, we just can't afford it, six billion per submarine. I'm gonna have a coronary every time I say that. So this was from an interview I did for the Providence Journal. This was a, another uh, analyst from the U.S. Naval Institute 
And so these aren't, uh, you know, leftist think tank people. These are pretty mainstream military guys. Uh, the dirty secret is who knows what's going to happen because the money's not there. Uh, so this was from David Adams of the U.S. Naval Institute. Um, so I recently interviewed um, a researcher named Hans Christensen at the Federation of American Science, um, this American Scientists. He writes a lot on the U.S. nuclear arsenal and nuclear weapons in general. And he was saying that we, we are in a new arms race already. It's not, you know, that it could happen. We are in it. And he said, but because of um, arms reduction agreements that we've already signed, the arms race right now isn't, you know, who can have the most warheads. It's who can have the most advanced technology. So that's basically causing the U.S. to pursue these incredibly expensive weapon systems, and, and these submarines are going to be uh, among them. So really extremely, exceptionally advanced technology that comes at a uh, very high cost. So in terms of subsidies to General Dynamics, um, Maine, uh, you guys are in first place. Um, whole, the nationwide, um, if, you, if you look it up, no, no state has given more subsidies to General Dynamics than Maine. Um, hmm? Yeah, by quite a bit, too. So you guys are at about um, 250 million, and I think Connecticut at 125 is, is the next one, so double what anyone else has uh, put up in subsidies. Um, no, it was done by the state, so through state government and Bath through local government, municipal government. Um, but Connecticut and Rhode Island have certainly ramped up the amount of money in recent years. Um, I mean, Maine is so far ahead too because they started off at 194 million with that um, with that deal in 1997. Kind of give you a sense of the total picture. Um, the it's interesting because Bruce, you, you've talked a lot about how um, Democrats, Democrats, you know, kind of railed on uh, on uh, the GOP for their tax for their tax bill, this giveaway to corporations, reducing their tax rate, and then Democrats in Maine then wanted to give a uh, sixty million dollar subsidy at first, and then reduce to forty five million. Sort of the hypocrisy of that um, in Rhode Island and Connecticut. Um, both states have all Democratic congressional delegations. When they announced their $83 million and $34 million deals, uh, the members of the delegation were there for the announcement, the governors were there, and they all said, this is great, we're creating jobs. Um, and meanwhile, General Dynamics, uh, their effective tax rate because of this GOP law uh, has been reduced from 28.6 to 19%. So they're getting, you know, quite the windfall from this. Um, and that was that tax bill that all these people were criticizing. Um, and it, it really is sort of, I think you can objectively say that it's ridiculous that the governor of Connecticut or the governor of Rhode Island is saying, trying to take credit that they're creating jobs. Um, a company that's getting billions of dollars from the federal taxpayers, um, I think you can pretty reasonably say that these jobs have already been been created. Um, um, Maine to me was the most impressive in terms of the opposition, but you also had representatives who um, at least gave you the courtesy of the veneer of democracy by, by, by proposing it as, as a bill, you know. So, so Jennifer DeChant, she wrote the bill, you guys had hearings, you all protested it. Um, I think, Bruce, you said that you thought it was kind of, you were pretty sure they were going to do it anyway, right? So you, you kind of knew from the get-go that they were likely going to approve something. Um, in Rhode Island, in Rhode Island, no one knew of anything. One day, the governor says we're having a press conference and announces uh, we're giving away $34 million to this company. Be happy, people. I've created jobs. So there was no, there was no, you know, uh, 
bill proposed. There was no public hearings or nothing like that. In Connecticut, um, a state senator proposed giving $150 million to electric boat. Um, I, being someone who follows us more closely than anyone in, in, the, in Connecticut and Rhode Island, um, I had trouble following this bill. First they put up a placeholder that had no details, then all of a sudden they had another bill that, you know, the name had been changed and it was changed to uh, the Apprenticeship Connecticut Initiative, which you hear that, like, who, <laughs> you know, think $150 million to, uh, you know, a submarine maker. Um, it was written in this extremely confusing way that you didn't really even understand where most of the money was going to go to. Um, it doesn't name, none of these bills, by the way, name General Dynamics by name. It just says, um, it describes a company that only General Dynamics could fit the description of. But then, I mean, I would also say, though, in, in Rhode Island, there are people who had been on the delegation about more sort of national, global issues. Um, both senators in Rhode Island voted against the, the Yemen war resolution. Um, they, they both, and Jim Langevin, the congressman, voted for the, um, uh, the last national defense authorization bill and previous ones, you know, setting military spending at, you know, astronomical levels. So people had been, um, had been pressuring these people for, uh, for their support of military spending and war. They had been less aware of what was going on at the local level. And I think that's changed in the last year. And I did notice after the, um, after the $34 million was announced, uh, people on social media um, were, were, were commenting on, this is ridiculous, this is absurd, you know. I asked the Department of Labor and Training to provide me the average starting salary for an electric boat employee who was being, um, who was being um, trained with state funds. And they got back to me with the number 35,000 which seemed pretty low, you know, and that's not, I mean, they're, they're trying to sell me on the idea that these are middle class jobs, that you're going to raise a family, 35,000, you know, a year is, is, is not that. I did a story on looking into the uh, state reports on companies that have employees receiving Medicaid, uh, uh, Medicaid or um, uh, dependents who are receiving Medicaid. Electric Boat had a number of employees, you know, and the, the amount of benefits that were being paid out by taxpayers was in the millions. Uh, so not only do you have the fact that this money was used to renovate this, this mill building, which isn't cheap, uh, so that there could be affordable housing for people in that community. So now they're moving in people from other communities uh, to use that affordable housing that, you know, should be going to the people who already live there. And then you also have the question of, well, if these are such great jobs and they're so worth it and the state needs to put so much subsidy money behind it, um, why then are these people qualifying for um, housing assistance? And I think now they're at this situation where they have all these people retiring. And I think they're trying to hire a new workforce that's going to be at a much lower wage level than the people who are retiring. And that's the story of, you know, corporate America in general today. The overall, the overall coverage has really been to just take basically talking points from press releases and press conferences and then fashion the story as being, you know, how it's been presented by the governor and, and general dynamics. This was a video from one of the local TV stations and um, it was all about how we're going to be building these submarines and Nowhere in it do they ever, they, and they say, this is good news for Rhode Island, this is good news for Rhode Island, jobs are coming. And they never even mention um, that these are nuclear armed weapons, nuclear powered and nuclear armed. And, I, and I've talked a lot about the business reporting angle to it, but I thought an another reason why I wanted to report on this story was I felt that um, if a community is dedicating itself to building nuclear weapons, there should be some discussion. People should say, you know, um, people who live in that area should be saying, you know, whether or not they actually agree with that. They should be aware of um, what that means. After the strikes in Syria, um, a lot of the defense contractors, they just had a, an immediate spike in their stock price. So this is the annual report, 2017. 
revenue up to 31 billion, total backlog 63.2 billion, up a billion, uh, diluted earnings per share up 10.6%. Uh, Marine Systems Group, which includes Electric Boat and BIW, earnings grew 15%. Uh, the stock buyback issue, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with that. In 2017, they totaled $1.5 billion. 2013 to 2017, $10.9 billion. Uh, record high for the company in 2013, $3.4 billion. Uh, this all accelerated under the current CEO who started in 2013. Um, so stock buybacks, that's using the cash that they have on hand to buy their own stock on the open market. Um, something companies used to rarely do because laws prevented them from doing it. Uh, when the SEC changed its rules in the 80s, people started doing it more. In corporate America, it's accelerated in the last decade. Um, so this is all money that the company's not putting into research and development, which you would think that the Pentagon would be concerned about if they want these companies to be researching and developing things that keep us safe. Um, they're not going to employee pensions. Last year, they did $1.5 on buybacks, 200 million went to employee pensions. Um, and then there's the question of, well, if you need this money from the states, why are you using money to buy back your own stock? Um, people who think stock buybacks are justified, they, they'll say, well, you need to do it. Uh, it's okay to do it if you think your stock price is uh, undervalued. Um, yeah, that's not an undervalued stock price. Um, the other reason would be that you don't see any investment opportunities for your company in the near future. So you don't have anything to invest in, why not you know, buy back your stock? Well, if they're gonna be building a $104 billion um, uh, nuclear weapon system, they have all, these other, uh, all this other work in the pipeline, I don't think you could say that they don't have something that they can invest in. Uh, this was a quote from the CEO. Uh, from the earnings call and with regard to the GOP uh, tax law, uh, she called it a happy event. Uh, this is a quote from a uh, uh, defense industry analyst whose uh, group is actually uh, receives funding from General Dynamics and other defense contractors. Uh, but it is a pretty telling quote. Boeing makes planes, Raytheon makes missiles, General Dynamics makes money. And this is from the, uh, you guys have probably seen his name cited. He was the um, UMass Lowell professor who provided a lot of information for the buyback story uh, that I originally wrote for the Province Journal. And he said, I think his taxpayers were being taken for fools. 